Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome to the program Organizational Behavior. I'm your host Komal. And as you know that uh, the subject under discussion has largely to do with the term behavior. In today's program, we're going to discuss foundations of group behavior and conflicts. Sir, my uh, first question to you and obviously introducing our expert, Mr. Fawad Bashir and the students, is that uh, how do we define groups and how do we classify groups? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. As Komal told us that uh, uh, this subject has largely to do with the, the behavior and uh, previously we discussed individual behavior now we are like starting the group behavior. Yeah. Definitely uh, two or more individuals will form a group and uh, they interact with one another and uh, they uh, work on a specific topic, a topic or an objective in an organization. And there are certain types of groups, generally major two groups type are there like formal group and informal groups like formal groups are designed work groups with, uh, by the organization and organizational mm -hmm. structure and definitely there is a definite task or objective to be done and so far as uh, informal groups are concerned like you people mm -hmm. the, your friendship groups a group that is neither formally structured nor organizationally determined appears in response to the need for social contact mm -hmm. okay and uh, uh, definitely uh, there are certain uh, groups like uh, command groups, a group composed of the individuals who report directly to given manager mm -hmm. in an organization. Interest groups, those working together to attain a specific objective, specific interest. Task group, definitely uh, uh, to complete a task. Single task might be there in friendship group, definitely an informal group mm -hmm. type. Okay. Sir, so I have a question. Why people need to join group? Uh, basically, there are certain needs like need of uh, security, we want security mm -hmm. in, in social construct, we want status, so we want to join uh, such a group which ha uh, has a status in the society. Then we want to enhance our self-esteem, we want affiliation as we discussed in Maslow hierarchy there uh, is a need known as social needs. Social needs. Mm -hmm. Then we need power mm -hmm. upon a group, yes. want to control them and we want to achieve a goal. Exactly. The goal yeah. achievement. These are almost all the things that we have discussed in previous yeah, programs. Yeah, 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 Ali, yeah. do you have a question? Yes, yeah, sir. How groups are developed and what are the different stages involved in this process? Okay. Uh, the literature told us that uh, first of all we form a group known as the forming stage. Mm. The first stage in the group development process, then storming. storming. Definitely there would be a conflict. conflict mm. there mm. Inter or within the group, intra group conflict. Uh, so we want to develop it, we want to like settle the conflicts. Afterward, we normalize mm -hmm. as a group. This is known as norming stage, mm -hmm. and the third, uh, known as, uh, this is the third stage characterized by close relationship and cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. Then comes the performance, and uh, we can say that performing stage, the fourth stage when the group is fully functional mm -hmm. okay Function. and uh, if this is a group for a definite time period then definitely it will be adjourned mm -hmm. and adjourning stage is the final stage in group development for temporary groups mm -hmm. okay if yes. th that is a continuing group definitely this will be eliminated yes. but generally ad we adjourn as a group as well sir the stages of group development are applicable for formal as well as informal groups yeah sure, right. sure, sure, sure. anyone has a question Okay, sir, you continue with the next concept. Then. Okay. Uh, so far as uh, the temporary groups are concerned, there is a concept of uh, punctuated equilibrium model. Mm -hmm. okay. Here we set a group direction, first phase of inertia, then halfway point transition, major changes, second phase of inertia and acceleration, accelerated activity. And this is the model. Mm -hmm. uh, this group, generally uh, we form such groups in projects we start it from a kick off meeting first meeting that is very important because here we'll set a pace mm. then the first phase of inertia will be there then there will be a transition when we will try to improve the performance of the group mm -hmm. and this is a very critical time because here there is a major transition mm. when we go through it successfully then phase two that is an improved stage where performance is towards the higher side and and then we'll complete the task here two things are very important the first meeting mm -hmm. and that transition where we okay. are changing towards the higher performance and i think this is a very common uh, life uh, model yeah, because yeah, in is, everyday is, life is, we is, form is. groups and yeah, for right. certain achievement of tasks mm. we then meet up to discuss those groups yeah very right 
Okay. So kindly explain inertia. Most of the students don't know about inertia. Basically, when uh, there is a movement, we mm -hmm. take a step and uh, we start up something. Uh, we say that it is the state of inertia. inertia. When inertia. we are like, picking up something, we are gaining starting something. to yeah, yeah, gaining a speed towards yes. something. Okay. Sir, I have a question. Yes, sure. Sir, how group behavior plays role in performance and satisfaction of individuals? Very right. Okay, there is a group behavior model, and again we'll refer to the slide. First of all, we start from the external conditions imposed on the group. Okay. Definitely, we don't live in isolation. We live in an environment. Yes, then uh, comes the role of group member, resources, group structure, group processes will come afterward. Mm -hmm. uh, here, uh, there will be impact of group task mm -hmm. and ultimately performance, performance and satisfaction. I'll discuss them one by one. Definitely. First of all. Imposed condition might be towards the uh, from the, from the organizational overall strategy, authority structure, regulations, resource constraints. Definitely mm -hmm. a definite, uh, you can say, uh, external factor which have an effect. Then the selection process of the group individuals, mm -hmm. group members, performance and evaluation system. Then organizational culture and physical work setting. This is the like okay. uh, external side. Then come the group member resources, mm -hmm. what they contribute. Basically, first of all, interpersonal skills. Exactly. Yes, Conflict management and resolution, very important in a group, at least collaborative problem solving, hmm. very appropriate. Then communication is very yeah, important. Communication sir. is very important. Then personality characteristics, mm -hmm. personality contributions are sociability, how mm -hmm. social you are, because exactly. in a group there is a social network. Mm -hmm. Initiative, whether you take initiative or not as a person, Openness. openness definitely it should be there at least in a group and if then sir open. flexibility is also very important yeah. flexibility because so far as uh, individual or uh, group relationship are concerned if you're not flexible enough if mm. you are rigid mm. definitely uh, you cannot like absorb uh, others uh, exactly. viewpoints yeah. yes. okay then group structure the third <coughs> variable here comes the role of formal leadership all right Leadership that is imposed on the group by the organization, mm -hmm. that definitely uh, authority structure. Leaders who drive their power from the positions mm -hmm. they occupy in an organization. And formal leaders may or may not also be uh, the formal leaders of the group in which they function. Mm -hmm. Basically, okay. they might be uh, like outside the uh, <coughs> function as well. <coughs> but again, they're designated from mm -hmm. the management yeah. and formal leadership. This is structure side. I have a question that sure. what roles and uh, group leaders play to remove conflicts among uh, any group group members uh, as the, the desired uh, outcome. The, uh, right. outcome is producti uh, productivity. Very right. Basically the role, uh, first role, or generally we define it, a set of expected behavior pattern attributed to someone occupying a given position in, in a social unit. Mm -hmm. And from a manager we do expect that first of all he or she will set the direction, Definitely. he or she will manage conflicts as well. Okay, uh, now there are certain other terminologies before uh, completely uh, uh, responding to your, to your question. Role perception, mm -hmm. how an individual perceive about perceive his or her role, exactly. an individual exactly. view of uh, her situation in the organization. Then role identity, okay. certain attitudes and behavior consistent with a role. Okay, if role is not identifiable, ambiguity is there, okay, you cannot clearly define it, you cannot clearly okay. perform it. Then comes the role structure. expectations out of you like how others believe a person should act in a given situation so definitely mm -hmm. here yes, organization is, is expecting something, something out of us and okay. this is not uh, strictly for the leaders but every member of the group for every member right. every member every member these are generic definitions right. then there is a very important concept known as psychological contract mm -hmm. yeah there is a legal contract between like employee and the employer but there is a psychological contract, psychological understanding, an unwritten agreement mm -hmm. that sets out what management expects from the employer and vice versa. Definitely. Yes, sir. This is a psychological contract. Mm -hmm. And uh, today's contemporary organizational behavior is uh, focusing much upon it because uh, if a legal contract is breached, there is a legal way out. But if psychological contract is breached, which is just an understanding, what will you do about it? Okay. Then it comes ethical issues. Yes, sir, <coughs> sort of. Then comes the role conflict. Defin uh, uh, in a group, there will be definitely a conflict. 
a situation in which an individual is confronted by divergent role expectations. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are expecting something out of mm -hmm. him, and he is perceiving something else. else. Yeah. Yeah. There might be conflicts. <coughs> okay, so then comes the norms, group norms, because these are acceptable standards of behavior within the group. Uh, and uh, these are shared by all the group members. If you are following those norms, definitely it will be a smooth running, but if you will be like deviating from it, so there is a very important concept known as deviant <coughs> workplace <coughs> behavior. We'll come at, uh, on it on, uh, afterward. Uh, classification or classes of norms, performance norms hmm. in a group, yes, appearance norms. Definitely, even in an uh, education institute, these do exist. Exactly. Social arrangement norms. Social arrangement. And then, then, sir, there is allocation of resources. Yeah, allocation norms of as resources. Well. How would you allocate the resources? Okay, uh, the important concept here is conformity mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. those norms. Adjusting one's behavior to align with the norms of the group, this is a must. Like we can quote the example of Shweb Akhtar here, mm -hmm. that he uh, was and he is still a very good and best performer. But so far as norms alignment is concerned, mm. he's not very much aligned exactly. with those group norms. That's why he's out of the team. Mm. Then comes the very important concept, reference groups. Mm -hmm. These are the groups to whom or to which we refer while setting the standards. Okay. As an, as an example, for example, yeah, example when, when we are example setting certain yeah, rules, that we set, uh, refer to that group or very something. Right. Uh, this concept do exist in our daily lives as mm -hmm. well. Like, uh, re in religion, we have reference exactly, groups. Definitely. In society, we have reference groups. Even in family, we have we reference have groups. Even in study. Yeah, in group study. Yeah. 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 Group, groups to which we aspire to be. Yeah, very mm -hmm. right. Uh, okay, then comes the concept of deviant workplace behavior. Definitely, uh, as uh, you might be knowing, you might be recalling it, we discussed this concept and tied it in, in the organizational behavior model as well. Yes, this is uh, a behavior which is not required. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an anti-social action mm -hmm. by organizational members that intentionally violate established norms and that result in negative consequences, consequences for the organization, the organization, its members or both. Mm -hmm. So this behavior is not required when we'll be violating the norms of the group. Definitely. Okay. So I have a question for you. Sure. Mm -hmm. So how size and cohesiveness is associated with group? Very right, very right. Okay, here uh, another uh, term is uh, there as well, known as social loafing. And you students are again very well aware of it, <laughs> that if group goes beyond a specific size, then it is difficult to manage yeah. everyone in and, the group. And, and another thing, uh, social loafing concept. The tendency for individuals to expend less effort when working collectively exactly. than when working individually. individually yes. You try to put your... The blame on the other person. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, uh, so far as your cohesiveness concept is mm. concerned, degree to which group members are attracted to each other and uh, are motivated to stay in the group, mm -hmm. cohesiveness yes. within the group. And there are certain factors which increase the group cohesiveness. Like uh, making the group smaller, mm -hmm. definitely, mm -hmm. if the uh, size will uh, go beyond a certain limit. Yeah. It reduce the uh, size. Yeah, yeah, reduce the size. And encourage agreement with the group goal. It is also known as like uh, spirit de corps, or uh, as uh, Henry Fiol, hmm. a management scientist, told that subordination of individual interest to the group interest. Mm -hmm. Okay, then increase time members spend together as much as yes. possible, whether that is formal, whether that is informal. Exactly. Then uh, increase group status and admission difficulty. Okay, if the, uh, uh, if the group is like, uh, it has a very high status within mm -hmm. or, uh, organization mm -hmm. or in a social construct, so people will be willing to like uh, be a member of it. Stimulate competition, give rewards to the group, not individuals. Not individuals. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, physically isolate, isolate the group. The groups. So yes. they'll be in the closest proximity exactly. with one another. What are the group processes, sir? Okay. First of all, the uh, very known concept known as synergy. Yes. Synergy, synergy is also known as 2 plus 2, two, plus two equal two to 5. Exactly. 1 plus 1 is equal to 11. Yeah, yeah. An action of two or more uh, substances that result in an effect that is different from the individual summation of the sub substances. Okay. Mm. Like if you are like uh, putting all of uh, the yeah, efforts in uh, one direction, definitely the effect will be more than the additive effect. Definitely. Then the social facilitation effect. The tendency for performance to improve or decline in a response to the presence of others. You try to facilitate one another as a group. 
Okay. Anything else? So Sir, are there any transitions in conflict thought? Okay, now we'll like uh, be moving towards the concept of conflict. Definitely, whenever there uh, will be like uh, two or more individuals, mm -hmm. there is uh, a probability, very high probability that there will be a conflict. Traditional view was that uh, the all uh, type of conflicts are harmful and they should be avoided. Negative today, thought negative. always about but, conflict. But Today's concept is different. Different. Okay, causes poor communication mm -hmm. might be like uh, leading towards the conflict. Lack of openness, failure to yes. respond, employee, employee needs. needs will be arising the conflict. Okay, so there are two major concepts. Human relation view of conflict is the belief that conflict is a natural and inevitable outcome, outcome in, any, in group. any group. This is today's thought. Oh, an interactionist view of conflict, the belief that conflict is not only a positive force in a group, but that it is absolutely necessary for a group to perform effectively. How come? So okay. Competition? Yeah, competition might be there and uh, it mainly is dependent upon type of conflict. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, two uh, type of uh, conflicts like functional and dysfunctional. dysfunctional. Functional conflicts are rather encouraged mm -hmm. because uh, these will uh, bring an improvement, mm -hmm. innovation in an organization and when you will be focusing upon uh, like a function that this should be performed this way or that way. Yeah. And if I am uh, correct, dysfunctional conflicts are those which bring somehow a hindrance in group performance. Yeah, these are sort of individual conflict, dysfunctional mm -hmm. conflicts, known as conflict <coughs> that will restrict the performance, interpersonal conflicts. Yeah. And these uh, have, uh, has, uh, uh, this sort of conflict has nothing to do with the functionality of performance. Right. Basically, if uh, two personality types are not matching, matching with one another, mm -hmm. there will be an interpersonal conflict, Definitely. which is not required, at least in an in organizational, organizational setting. <coughs> so, again, uh, types of functional conflicts might be task conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm conflict over a task or goal, a relationship conflict, okay. this is interpersonal, process conflict, that how to do or how, the get, uh, how to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... Sir, I have a question yeah. here, that what is the process followed by conflict and what are the desired outcomes, means uh, whether the outcome of a conflict is positive or negative? Okay, here is a very comprehensive model given in the text, the conflict process. It has uh, five stages. First is antecedent condition where the things are being created. Uh, it has the communication structure, personal variables, we'll discuss it later. Then uh, cognition and personalization, second stage. The third stage is intentions, mm -hmm. whether they are conflict handling or avoiding or, or you are like uh, supporting the conflict. Then your behavior over the conflict. Mm -hmm then comes the outcomes. outcomes. Okay. outcomes. We will discuss them one by one. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, the potential uh, opposition or incompatibility stage one, communication, there might be misunderstandings, noise or you are not yes. getting like the proper uh, message from the others. Then the structure size and specialization of the job, size is big then definitely uh, chances are more. As we discussed yeah. before as well. Then uh, jurisdictional clarity or ambiguity, ambiguity. Yeah, then uh, members goal incompatibility yes. with the organizational goals. Leadership styles, close or participative, Same. definitely participative uh, type it's of leadership like mainly yeah. emphasizes on the conflict management, mm -hmm. reward systems, win-lose, right. dependence, interdependence of the groups and uh, personal variables are like uh, differing individual value systems, mm -hmm. different personalities, personality types, exactly. definitely these are the like, sources of conflict. Then the second stage, how do we like uh, conceive or perceive the conflict? Perceived conflicts are awareness by one or more parties of the existence of conditions that create opportunities for conflict to arise. And the felt concept is, uh, felt conflict is emotional involvement in a conflict creating anxiety, hmm. tenseness, frustration, frustration or hostility. Or hostility. <coughs> we feel like it. Exactly. Okay. So conflict definition is negative emotion and positive feeling. All Both right. are there. Mm -hmm. Positive. Negative. It is a combination of both. Yeah, that is of now, both. as in the new concept, is that uh, a conflict doesn't necessarily have to be negative. Yeah, it m might be positive might be as positive well, and as might well. be like contributing. So I have a question here. Yeah, sure. Sir, we know about the perceived conflicts and felt conflicts. Yeah. So, what is the major difference between both of them? 
basically perceived side uh, as we have discussed the concept attitude and behavior yes. attitude is intrinsic and behavior is extrinsic uh, it is more or less similar because perceived is the Some potential yes sir potential of something is there mm -hmm. that is perceived by you that yes, this sir. might occur but when you feel like it that th this is actually happening this is your felt side exactly. of the conflict intuitive side uh, no uh, after uh, after 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 like existence of something mm -hmm. intuitive is basically the sixth sense side All but right. this is the feeling side emotional side mm -hmm. emotional attachment mm -hmm. or detachment with something yes. okay then the third stage is what are the intentions decisions to act in a given way whether mm -hmm. they are favorable or unfavorable, unfavorable. cooperativeness assertiveness is required uh, cooperativeness is attempting to satisfy the, the other, other party's part. concern exactly. and assertiveness is attempting to satisfy own one one's own concern this is not required Okay. Yes, as in this is going to mind. affect the performance. Yeah, very right. Then comes the third stage, basically intentions. Competing, collaborating, avoiding. Mm -hmm. Either mm. you'll be competing for your own like own interest, mm. you will be collaborating. Like this is a situation in Tricky. which the parties to a conflict each desire to satisfy fully the concerns of all, all the parties. parties. All this the is parties. collaborative. Avoiding. Mm -hmm. You will uh, try to uh, avoid, avoid that or conflict. withdraw from that situation. This is all the, uh, or uh, suppress the conflict. Them. Yeah, suppress it. Then accommodating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The willingness of one party in a conflict to place the opponent's interest above his or her own interest. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then compromising. <coughs> a situation in which each party to a conflict is willing to give up something. something. So, so this, is model. this is the model. This is the model. Basically competing opposing yes, avoiding again and then compromising mm -hmm. you are like compromising on one thing for another collaborating both are going side by side and, and accommodating, accommodating. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, i had a question sure. i like that what role cooperativeness and assertiveness plays in modifying the group behavior basically if uh, as we have discussed that subordination of individual interest should be and must be towards the general interest of the organization mm -hmm. so okay. if cooperativeness is there that will be a group in which we'll try to accommodate one another we'll try to like bring in cohesiveness within the group mm -hmm. we'll yes, try sir. to like facilitate one another but if we'll try to uh, be assertive and just like putting our, our own side interests. for our own interest our own viewpoint mm -hmm. for own concern uh, for uh, our own concern or viewpoint upon others and we try to impose it mm -hmm. okay yes. then that definitely that group will not be that much performance exactly. oriented okay. okay anyone has a question I have a question. How conflicts are managed in organization? Okay. Now, uh, this is the fourth stage of yes, the model. Conflict management is the use of resolution and stimulation techniques to achieve the desired level of conflict. Okay. Uh, basically, conflict resolution techniques might be like problem solving. Mm -hmm. yes, then uh, superordinate goals are there, mm -hmm. like organizational goals, major goals. Then expansion of resources. If the resources will be uh, like expanded, definitely conflict might be resolved. This is by the organization. By the organization. Right. Then avoidance. Mm -hmm. We we'll try to avoid it. Uh, there are certain uh, conflicts which might be avoided. If we avoid them, they will not be like uh, hampering the like uh, performance. performance. Then definitely, definitely. Th those can be avoided. Smoothing. We try to smooth it out. How we'll smooth it out, we'll discuss it later on. Then uh, we can compromise for the like that superordinate goal. That that is the organizational requirement, and if we'll be compromising with one another, that will be better for the organization. An authoritative command, just yes. do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is required in certain situations as well. This is not recommended, but generally, uh, if uh, in certain situations authority is required, we'll try to do it. Altering the human variables. Okay, required variables because this is the subject of uh, uh, organizational behavior, and if we modify the behavior behavior requirement, mm -hmm. conflict might be resolved. Then altering the structural variables. If structure is the cause of mm -hmm. uh, that conflict. conflict, definitely we can uh, alter that thing towards the betterment. And then, uh, uh, if in certain situations, we we'll try to stimulate the conflict, mm -hmm. as we've already discussed, that a uh, few conflicts are. Better, better, better. positive, healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first technique is communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, then bring in outsiders, mm -hmm. and because outsiders have a different view of already existing construct, because they are not uh, used to of exactly. that particular environment. We and then they cannot them. be biased yes. as well they because be they are not used. Yeah. To. Then restructuring the organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and then appointing a devil's advocate. <laughs> devil's okay, now, sir, what is yes. this term? Basically, uh, to inculcate or to bring in more thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like, if uh, I'll ask someone that whether that is positive or negative, he'll say, no, this is not positive at all. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to, like, uh, 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 support my point. And I'll bring in more of more, like, like uh, I'll debate rather right. more and try more. To justify yeah, try to justify myself and bring in more points. And that devil advocates is uh, is basically triggering uh, that uh, triggering uh, positivity that thing, triggering all that right. thing and bringing more out of oh. you basically okay then the last stage sir outcomes yeah outcomes functional outcomes from the conflict group performance will be increased quality will be increased creativity and innovation will be increased encouragement and interest, interest. and curiosity Curiosity. will be increased and then provision of a medium of problem solving this group mm. will be like creation of an environment for self evaluation mm -hmm. and change and then uh, creating functional conflict, reward, dissent and punish conflict avoiders. Mm -hmm. Because again, we time and again we are talking that uh, functional conflict should be rather encouraged in an organization. Okay. Dysfunctional development of discontent, then reduce group effectiveness if dysfunctional conflicts are within uh, the group, they do exist. Ret uh, retarded communication, reduced group cohesiveness, and uh, 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 and uh, in fighting among group members. Okay. Yes. These are all the outcomes. Outcomes of dysfunction. 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 Conflicts. Okay. So, what is negotiation? Yeah. Sir, so I have a question also. Uh, how do we negotiate among groups? And sir, and there is also a term uh, called batna. Sir, can you yeah, please explain? Yeah. Sir, so I, I would like to add a question. Okay. That how, what role negotia negotiation play in resolving the conflicts? Very right. We go one by one, sir. Yeah, yeah. First you define Because uh, basically all uh, questions are inter interrelated with one another. First of all, uh, the when there will be a conflict, and we can better understand, uh, we're talking about two or more parties okay. involved there. Then uh, if two different opinions are there, like if even if uh, teacher and student within well, uh, within this relationship if we will like uh, uh, putting in a point mm -hmm. and you are not uh, agreeing with it there is a negotiation process Definitely. process even this do exist in a seller and a buyer Definitely. and when there is a conflict that uh, one party is uh, holding up a position and other party is holding another position mm -hmm. we we'll try to negotiate it out yes. and negotiation is a process in which two or more parties exchange goods services okay. An attempt to agree on the exchange rate for them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if yes. this is a matter of uh, like uh, performance, it is a matter of uh, any process or task. Definitely, there will be conflict. Mm -hmm. will settle it out. And Batna is the best alternative to a negotiated agreement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. and the lowest acceptable value to an individual for a negotiated agreement. Okay. So, so this negotiation is before the conflict or after the definitely conflict? Definitely after the conflict. Right. Right. When there will be a conflict, it will be like arisen and we will try to negotiate it out, we will uh, try to settle it down. So we can say it is a tool for managing conflict. It is a concept that uh, we want to get best out of it. Mm -hmm. And there are certain tools like uh, bargaining strategies. Yes, okay. like distributive bargaining distributive and bargaining. then integrate. Uh, integrate. 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 Uh, negotiating uh, that seeks to divide up a fixed amount of resources a win-lose situation. Definitely. This is distributive. Mm -hmm. This is uh, someone this loses and someone, someone wins. Gaming. Integrative is negotiation that seeks one or more settlement that can create a win-win win situation. situation. None mm -hmm. of them is losing. None None positive, the some yeah, positive some Positive some And this is again uh, we'll refer to a slide. If party A has its own point, party B has its own, own point. different point of view. We'll try to settle it down. Party uh, uh, B will like move towards the uh, party A or its viewpoint. Party A will like move towards, aspire towards moving party B. Party and B. when uh, the resistance will be removed, both will be like settling in a like uh, situation on a middle point, a middle point. Yes. and that might be a win-win. Definitely, because mm -hmm. both are settling down on a point win -win in which uh, both are gaining something. But if in a conflict, uh, a certain group or a certain party is weaker within its uh, logical statements or whatever, mm -hmm. then the situation might be win-lose. Uh, here comes the concept of uh, third-party party negotiation, right. because if uh, like uh, a person who is not very talkative, who is not very impressive in communication, uh, cannot impress one, one another, so there is a concept of third party. Uh, the first type is mediator. Hmm. It is a person, a neutral third party, who facilitates a negotiated solution 
by using a reasoning persuasion and suggestion for alternatives exactly. mediate mm. the mediate. Uh, this is a very common uh, term in not yeah. only in uh, conflicts other ways we have mediators yeah, yeah, yeah. and then is a con uh, there is a concept of conciliator mm -hmm. a trusted third party who provides an uh, uh, informal communication link between the negotiator and the opponent so what is the difference between the two sir basically mediator might be like suggesting mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. but conciliator is just conciliating link. Or, uh, uh, creating okay. a link between both so the parties question here yeah. so is there some self interest between the mediator or the consultant to become a third party so between the yeah yeah basically Uh, as in daily life, we uh, have certain arbitrators, mm -hmm. mediators. Mm -hmm. There might be a social interest. Okay, there might be a financial interest. Mm -hmm. Might there be might a personal interest. Yeah, personal interest mm -hmm. might be there as well. Then, sir, aren't the mediators uh, ought to become a bit biased if their interests are there? Yeah, uh, we uh, first of all, the major consideration is that they should be unbiased. Mm -hmm. As uh, we discussed in the definition, as well, right. they should be neutral, like a judge, mm -hmm. judge. in a court. But if judge is biased, we can't do anything. Yes, we yes. would try to figure it out that uh, uh, he or she should be unbiased. Mm -hmm. And then there is the concept of arbitrator. Mm -hmm. Arbitrator is like a judge in the court, like a third party to a negotiation who has the authority to dictate All an agreement. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is a consultant, mm -hmm. an impartial third party, skilled in conflict management, mm -hmm. who attempts to facilitate creative problem solving through. communication and analysis definitely this is very much required in an organization mm -hmm. because usually consultant are those parties who who like bring out a win win situation creative problem solving solution with this we have come to the end of today's episode i hope that the students as well as the viewers have gotten a fair idea and understanding of the concepts that we discussed in today's program that was behavior of the groups and the conflicts with this i'd like to say allah hafiz